All right, Brandy, this is pretty exciting. There's so much going on in the Hudson Valley beer scene, so much going on in the Hudson Valley brewing scene over the past several years. It's kind of become a powerhouse. And now it's uh, it's become a part of the culinary world as well. And I mean that both as culinary as a term and culinary as proper noun because Culinary Institute of America is you guys are now associated with Brooklyn Brewery and you're making completely new original beers right here in the Hudson Valley. First of all, we are joined by Hutch and Doug from the Culinary Institute of America. How did this all happen? How did Brooklyn decide, hey, you know, we want to be involved with the culinary. So this all started about three years ago when I had a student who said, gee, I know some people at Brooklyn. You want to come speak in the class? Which they came up and spoke. And from there, through meetings and collaborations, uh, the CIA and Brooklyn Brewery uh, came together, opened up a brewery here on campus. Wow. Okay. So it's a real official brewery. It's not like, oh, we have a licensing deal where we're going to be serving Brooklyn beer. You, Hutch, you're going to be brewing specific beers to the culinary. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a fully operating brewery um, that goes along with the brewing um, art and science of brewing class. And uh, so we're able to both give like, education to students about the beer, brewing process, but also it's a licensed, functioning production brewery. And you have roots right here in the brewing scene of the area, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've been in New York State for the last about dozen years, mm. uh, in the last five years in the Hudson Valley brewing here. Yeah. So I have a lot of connections and a lot of friends here. Right. Uh, there's a lot of great beer being brewed here. Sure. So it's kind of fun to be part of it. In this opportunity, I mean, people are going to be able to learn the craft of brewing kind of hands-on, right, in a, a large scale. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, uh, Doug does the classroom instruction, so he gets to teach them all, like, the facts and figures and, and what all these ingredients are and all the processes. Then they get to come into the brewery, and the brewery serves like a lab. Oh, okay. And they get to come in and get their hands dirty and... Rig out the mash tun and help me pitch yeast and uh, clean kegs. I was going to say, cleaning is going to be a huge part of this, right? Uh, I don't mind having a very uh, hands-on labor force. It's kind of a nice thing as a small eager, brewer. Sure. Yes, <laughs> eager, <laughs> excited. Um, you know, not that cleaning kegs isn't an exciting, fun activity. <laughs> it's a little repetitive. Uh, but, you know, with a, with a, a nice labor force, it's great. Um, yeah, they get the hands-on education. And then also get to contribute to brewing a batch of beer. So every class gets a chance to kind of help inspire and create a new batch of beer that we're selling. So okay. we have our, our class project, Cast Iron Stout, that we're trying right now. Now and, that's uh, exactly what I was wondering. What are the beers that people can uh, look forward to experiencing? Sure. So we have two flagship beers, um, Cleaver IPA, big, bold, hoppy, West Coast-style IPA, uh, and Mise en Place Wit, which will be our two house beers. The Wit, very traditional mm. Belgian-style beer. with a Super food-friendly. Very food-friendly. Uh, uses orange and coriander, so uh, really nice beer, very approachable. And then, yeah, a rotating lineup of seasonals. So the first of our, was our class project stout. Um, bring a Kolsch. Um, oh, that's going to be Wednesday. Exciting. That'll be out in early February. Yeah. And then, uh, then we'll we'll go from there. We'll see. You know, we kind of stress with the students that not only do we want to have a balanced lineup of beers because mm-hmm. we're only going to ever have three or four beers on tap. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but things need to be seasonally appropriate, and they got to be able to sell. Right. You know? Right. So, I if I were when I'm I'm clearly not, but if I were say, tasting these beers right now in front of the microphone, because I would never do such a thing, and very too professional for that. Um, I would say I am absolutely in love with this stout and the roastiness of it, and it's really drinkable, and it's it's kind of, sometimes when you get these stouts, and it's an oatmeal stout, right? Yep. yep. Sometimes you get a little bit of sweetness that's kind of like, eh, I can, I can kind of do half of one of these, and then it's going to start getting warm because it's going to take me longer mm-hmm. and longer to drink it. This one's got just enough kind of roastiness to clean off the palate a little bit. Yep. It's just a really good, rich You need some beer. bitterness in there to help balance it all out. Yeah. Um, and that's what the roasted malt give you. You know, right. that espresso-y, chocolatey character balanced by some bitterness. And then the oats was actually, that was a student idea to use the oats, which give you kind of a nice full body without being really heavy. Yeah. So it, it has a lot of fullness, but it's only 5.8%. It's not a really big stout. So it's not going right. to so take you out So you can drink it, but it doesn't fill you up. Right, right. Now, it's are people in the public sphere going to be able to come in and try some of these beers as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, on, right now we're on tap at the Egg, which is our student commons. Cool. Uh, American Bounty Restaurant has this on tap, and then over the next... Probably two months or so, the other restaurants will all be retrofitted with draft systems, so the beer will be available to the public. Excellent. Now, is there, uh, of course, one of the big things in beer right now, and I think it's kind of growing, is the idea of pairing beer and food, um, brewing beer that specifically, as Brandy said a couple of moments ago, when it comes to that wit, it, it just seems to go really well and mm-hmm. would go with a lot of different things. Is that something that you're going to be kind of teaching and, and going into with, hey, 
this is the type of style that would go really well with this or, or cuisine that would go really well with this style. I mean, one of the cool things about working with students at the CIA is that they can teach me about it. Oh, there you, you know, go. They have more experience. I mean, obviously, I have experience being in the industry, and I can tell mm -hmm. you, you know, some general things. And working in conjunction with Brooklyn Brewery, Garrett Oliver, the brewmaster there, is kind of the leader of the beer and food pairing movement hmm. in, in our yes. industry. Yeah. But the students know a lot more about food than I do. So they can come in and say, <laughs> hey, I can say, yeah, that stout will go great with um, with dessert. It go, goes great with a, a dark chocolate flavored, you know, cake. Mm -hmm. Sure. But they might have a great idea that I never even thought of. Right, right. Yeah. That's kind of the fun of the fun part of beer is that you really can't go wrong. It's just yeah. how right better. can you go? It's very forgiving. Yeah. Yeah, you really can do a lot of stuff with it. Right. Now, is this a program that you're only offering to students who have already been at the culinary for two years? Is this like they get to choose their individual major or does this can students actually come in and this is what they're going to be learning? No, so this is one of two beer classes that we actually have at the school. So we have a beer appreciation class where they taste different beers. So a day on Belgium, a day on beer from England, a day mm -hmm. on German beers. And in fact, they do a four-course dinner with beer paired with each course, and they have to write a paper regarding those pairings. And in this class, where the students are physically making the beer, they're both electives in the bachelor's program. So most of the students who are taking this class are juniors and or seniors who are taking this class. Uh, some of these students are part of the uh, beverage concentration that we offer at the school where they spend time uh, taking classes here on beverages, wine, spirits, mixology, and they also spend a semester at our campus over in Napa Valley. Oh, wow. So yeah. they get uh, That's hop immersion. country as far as I'm concerned. You, you might think it's <laughs> wine country. That's hop country for me. Everywhere so. is hop country That's in my right. world. That's right. And uh, will there ever be like an adult, you know, continuing ed class or is that in the future for a Saturday class that the, I know the school does them occasionally. We are looking at this now that uh, we're starting to get our feet up underneath us. Uh, we definitely want to be a part of the local community, the Hudson Valley community and the national community. So future program and could come online down the road uh, regarding the general public. Um, what what's great about the the brewery is that it also allows us to deal partnerships or, or relationships with the beer industry as a whole. Mm. And that could bring future whatever that may be. Future love. A lot of love. <laughs> there definitely will be some collaborations. We'll be working with some other breweries. Awesome. Um, kind of brewing things together and doing some cool, fun stuff. And there's certainly no lack of interest from the bigger student body and the mm -hmm. public at large. If you guys have seen the brewery, it's... Have you guys been surprised by the, the warm welcome and enthusiasm locally? Not totally. I mean, uh, people love beer. <laughs> you know? so, there you go. Put it uh, on a t-shirt. People know. love beer. And the beer industry is very open. Yes. It's, they're very engaging and inviting um, and very excited that we're coming along. It's it's always... Uh, it's it. What I love about the beer world is that they're always interested in something new and something different and people kind of have relationships that are, it's not this weird cutthroat kind of thing, especially in terms of craft stuff. It's, oh, wow, that guy's doing something really cool. I like that. I'd like to go talk to that person, express my admiration, and a lot of collaboration. You see that with, with even the biggest of craft breweries. You see a lot of collaboration. And there's a lot of sharing of information, too. I mean, we're all very friendly. It's a small, tight, kind of tight-knit group. Um, and if I go to somebody's brewery and I like one of their beers, like they're not going to lie to me about how they made it. You know, they're going to tell me, yeah, absolutely, here's what I use, and vice versa. Yeah. You know, call each other for advice. Uh, have all That's advice. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brandy and I both are huge fans of, of eating at the culinary and uh, <laughs> and enjoying ourselves there. So we will look yeah. forward to not only trying these uh, at the brewery uh, at the uh, brewery and at the uh, at the restaurants at the culinary and kind of seeing how it pair, pairs well with food and uh, also all of the new stuff. I'm sure you've got up your sleeve that you can't wait to unleash upon the rest of the uh, the public. We're just getting started. Yeah, yes, I, we are. I have no doubt, Doug Hutch. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.